All right, guys, hopefully we're feeling good about these rules. Um, and I, I hope we understand that these rules are making our lives so much easier that we don't have to do limits anymore to find derivatives. We don't have to use calculators to estimate slopes. Um, and, and these rules are really powerful. Um, we're gonna learn two more rules today. The product rule, which is what happens if we have two functions that are multiplying times each other that we know how to do the derivative of. And the quotient rule, which is what happens if we have two uh, functions that are dividing that we know how to do the derivative of each of those two functions that are dividing. Uh, last class, we said that what we are not allowed to do is if there are two functions multiplying, like we have here, is just take the derivative of this and the derivative of this and multiply it together. We said that would be very, very bad. And it is. Um, and we learned that instead, what we could do is rewrite it and take the derivative. So go ahead and first start by rewriting f of x in a way that will make it so that we know how to take the derivative. And hopefully you were able to get that f of x equals, when we multiply here, we can distribute and get 6x to the fourth plus 15x cubed. And we know how to do this derivative because now it's just the sum or difference of two different functions. And these are both power rules being multiplied by a constant. And we know how to do those. So go ahead and find this derivative of prime of x equals. And remember with the power rule, we multiply the power and we lower the power by one, so it's x cubed. And the sum and difference rule says we can do the derivative of this one and this one separately and just add the answers at the end. Here we multiply by the power and lower the power by one. And let's just see what would happen if we tried to, and this is bad, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a like an x through this already. What would happen if we tried to take the derivative of each one of these and um, multiply it together? So what's the derivative of 3x squared? Well, that's 6x. And if we multiply that times the derivative of this, this is a sum and difference, so we can do this. This is, the derivative would be 4x. The derivative of 2x squared is 4x. And the derivative of 5x is 5. Remember that uh, and the derivative of x is just 1. And when we multiply these together, these get 24x squared plus 30x, which is not the correct answer. We did it using a correct way up there. These aren't the same and therefore this is wrong. So I, I wanted to preemptively put an x through this because we know we can't just take the derivative of each of these separately. That's not right. But today we are going to learn a new rule for what to do when things are multiplying. And that's not to say you can't use this old way of multiplying it out. In fact, when you can, multiplying it out is usually faster. But there are lots of things, as you'll see below, that cannot be multiplied out x squared cannot be multiplied out to get sine of x. These can't be divided. This can't be multiplied out. And so we will need a rule for what to do uh, when two functions are multiplying. So here is the rule. If we have h of x and this function is the product, which means multiplying, of two other functions that we know how to do the derivative of, then the derivative of the product is equal to, and this is not going to be something you would guess, um, the derivative is equal to, you do the derivative of the first one, so f prime of x, but you leave the second one alone. So do the derivative of the first times the second one left alone, and then you add in the first one left alone times the derivative of the second one. So um, it should make sense that this is symmetric, right? It doesn't matter which order you multiply it in. This could be just as easily g of x times f of x. And so when you switch it around, you know, you're doing the derivative of this one times this one left alone, plus leave this one alone times the derivative of this one. So you do the derivative of the first one, leave the second alone, and add it to leave the first one alone times the derivative of the second. So let's see how this works redoing this up here. So in this case, what is the product? What are the two functions I know how to do the derivative of? Well, this is my f of x times g of x. And the product rule says I can do this using this rule by uh, saying, I'm going to call this h of x instead. Uh, h prime of x will equal, um, we do the derivative of the first one. So the derivative of 3x squared is 6x times the second one left alone. Plus, we add in, we leave the first one alone times the derivative 
of the second one. And the derivative of this one is 4x plus 5. And now when we simplify, I sure hope it comes out to be this other right one. Uh, let's see. So we get uh, 12x cubed plus 30x squared plus 12x cubed plus 15x squared. And we can combine like terms to get 24x cubed plus 45x squared, which was the same thing we had gotten up above when we did it another correct way. Now, using the product rule in this case is slightly longer. This is not like the right, the best way to do this problem. Um, you can do it using the product rule. It works, but it's easier just to multiply it out and then do the derivative. So, you know, our old skills aren't going away when you can multiply it out and multiply it out. Um, but again, there are going to be ones later that you cannot multiply it out because uh, you can't multiply x squared times sine of x. Um, this one is a quotient. It is the division of two things. And we said last class that what you cannot do is just do the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom. Um, instead, last class, we learned how to simplify it by just, this is a monomial, monomial. You can only do it if there's only one term in the bottom. But you can just divide each of these by x squared. So what is f of x when we rewrite, rewrite it when we divide both by x squared? Well, f of x should be x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared. Two of the x's cancel out in the top and the bottom. x squared divided by x squared will be 1. So 3x squared divided by x squared is 3. So here's the original function. And the derivative then is 2x. What would happen if we tried to take the derivative of the top and, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, like, this is wrong already, but let me not put an x through it already. Um, what would happen if I tried to take the derivative, this is not real, by taking the derivative of the top of, divided by the derivative of the bottom? Well, the derivative of the top is what? 4x cubed plus 6x. The derivative of the bottom is 2x. And when I divide these, when I simplify by dividing these, I will get uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2, x cubed divided by x is x squared, 6x divided by 2x is 3, and these are not the same. Um, and this one was right, this one is wrong, so you cannot take the derivative of the top and the bottom. Please don't do that. And some of you will, sometimes, uh, until you get used to this and then you won't do it anymore. Instead, when we have two functions dividing, and again, I would not use the quotient rule on this problem because you can just simplify it and make it not a quotient. Um, the quotient rule starts out very similar to the product rule. Remember how the product rule said, um, so the quotient rule says if you have h of x and you have uh, two functions dividing by each other, then the derivative will be, the product rule said you leave the first one alone, or sorry, you do the derivative of the first one and multiply times the second, and then you add in, leave the first one alone, times the derivative of the second. The quotient rule will start out very similarly. We will do the derivative of the top one, and this time the order really matters. You have to do the derivative of the top one first, um, because this is not the same as g of x over f of x. You can't just switch them around. Whereas here you could switch it around, so it was symmetric, but here it's not symmetric. So, um, so you have to do the derivative of the top, times the bottom left alone. But instead, because it's dividing, instead of when it was multiplying, when two things were multiplying, we added. When it's dividing, we will subtract. So it's do the derivative of the top times the bottom, minus we leave the top alone times the derivative of the bottom one. So this is very similar so far, except that um, we have to remember to put subtract instead of add. And then there's one more part to the quotient rule, which is you divide by whatever the bottom one is, squared. So this is a more complicated rule, and guys, if you can avoid using the quotient rule by simplifying, you should. Your life will be easier. Look how long this rule is. It's like my least favorite thing to do, but it works. And sometimes you have to do it because there's no way to simplify it. This is not a monomial, so we can't divide this. Um, you couldn't divide these even if it was a mono monomial because they're not like they're not like terms. So let's see how the quotient rule works on this. And I hope you will agree with me that it is ugly as hell. I'm going to call this h of x here. So h of a, h prime of x will equal, okay. So what is the rule? It's you do the derivative of the top one. And we're going to need to put parentheses if it's a binomial. So the derivative of the top one is 4x cubed plus 6x. And that needs to go in parentheses because it's going to be multiplying. And so the whole thing needs to multiply. 
times the derivative of the uh, times the bottom left alone. Sorry, the derivative of the top one times the bottom left alone minus and uh, parentheses are especially important here because we're going to be subtracting whatever this whole part is minus we leave the top one alone. times the derivative of the bottom. And we have to be really careful here. This whole thing, when we get this answer, the whole thing will subtract, and so the, the minus will distribute. Divided by the bottom squared. So x squared squared. Remember the rule is when you square uh, an exp when you do an exponent to an exponent, these multiply. Um, so it's x to the fourth. Now this one, you know, if you'd not known that rule, you still might've gotten it right, but let me do like one like x to the fifth to the sixth power. Um, this is x to the 30th power. Remember, if you have a power to a power, it multiplies. So this is x to the fourth. Um, and stylistically, sometimes the bottom is like uh, x plus 3, and you're going to cube it, or you're going to square it. You don't need to, like, multiply this out or anything. If it's just a monomial, yeah, go ahead and square it. But if it's like a binomial or something, just leave it as x plus 3 squared. It's fine. And then the top will often simplify. And this is going to be really ugly, guys. I hate this so much. Okay. So we can distribute the x squared. This is 4x to the fifth. Remember, when you multiply, you add exponents, plus 6x cubed. Over here, I'm going to multiply the 2x out first. And I'm going to leave the minus here for just a second. Uh, 2x times this is 2x to the fifth, plus 6x to the third. We add the exponents. This is an exponent of 1 divided by x to the fourth. And let me see if there are any like terms. There are like terms. This is subtracting part of this. So 6x cubed minus 6x cubed will be 0. Um, and so we get h prime of x equals 4x to the fifth minus... Oh, these are like terms too. 4x to the fifth minus 2x to the fifth is 2x to the fifth. Sorry, guys. 2x to the fifth. Something's wrong. I messed something up somewhere. Where did I mess up? Dun, 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 dun. Uh, because this one, oh, no, no, that's right. Okay, cool. I didn't mess up. <laughs> Over x to the fourth. And finally, we can simplify uh, x to the fifth divided by x to the fourth is just x. Four of them cancel out. Uh, and so we get 2x, which is the same thing we got up here when we did it correctly. So f prime of x equals 2x. Now, guys, what was faster? Dividing each of these and then doing the derivative or doing this ridiculous quotient rule where it, you know, got super long and then we ended up simplifying it. If you can simplify, do that first. Uh, it'll save you time. But otherwise, you can use the quotient rule. It comes out right. I mean, it's not like it's a wrong answer, but our tests and the AP test and our quizzes are all timed. Um, and so you want to be able to do things the fast way so you don't waste your time. Let's try to apply this, guys. So first of all, check yourself. Do you remember the product rule? What is it? And hopefully you were able to remember it. Um, let's apply it here. If this is f of x, then the derivative of f of x will be, let's do the product rule. It says we do the derivative of the first one, which is 2x, and leave the second one alone. Plus, we leave the first one alone and do the derivative of the second one. What is the derivative of sine of x? It's cosine of x. Hopefully we have that memorized by now. And that's it. We're done. There are no polynomials to combine. None of these are like terms, and our answer is just done. It's a pretty easy rule. Like, I, the product rule just isn't bad. You get used to it pretty quickly. It's not a big deal. The quotient rule is always a little bit uglier. So here, let's make sure you remember the quotient rule. Um, what is the quotient rule? Um, hopefully you remember that it's the derivative of the top one times the bottom left alone, plus we leave the top one alone, or sorry, minus we leave the... Uh, top one left alone times the derivative of the bottom divided by the bottom squared. Let's see how that works here. So f prime of x will be, we do the derivative of the top one. This is a sum and difference. The derivative of 5x is 5. This is a constant. The derivative is 0. The derivative of the top times the bottom left alone minus, we leave the top one alone, so we need to put it in parentheses because it's a binomial, times the derivative of of the bottom. Um, this is a sum and difference, so the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of 1 is 0, all over the bottom squared. Now here this is a binomial, and so it's fine to leave it as x squared plus 1 squared. We are not going to simplify the bottom. We are going to simplify the top. So in the numerator, 5 times x squared plus 1 is 
5x squared plus 5. Here, I would recommend multiplying out the 2x first. Um, so I'm going to leave the minus and make sure you leave the parentheses because this minus is going to need to distribute. Um, this is going to be 10x squared. 5x times 2x is 10x squared. Negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x over. The bottom is still squared. And now I can subtract. Um, this minus will distribute to both. So 5x squared minus 10x squared. 5x squared minus 10x squared is negative 5x squared. Um, minus negative 4x is plus 4x. And that doesn't combine with anything, but it'll go after the x squared and then plus 5. And we don't simplify the denominator. And this is considered stylistically the, the best way to write your answer. All right, guys, try one all on your own. What is the derivative of e to the x cosine of x? And if you had some trouble, let's look at it. The product rule says you. this is a product of two things. We know how to do the derivative. Oh, did we learn how to do e to the x yet? Oh, my gosh, guys. I am so sorry. We are going to very quickly uh, learn a new rule. I guess I forgot to tell you this. This is one of our... Man, I didn't tell you guys this. So sad. Did I... Are there other rules that I haven't told you guys yet? Okay. Um, we are going to add two basic rules right now. We're going to stop. And we're going to add two basic derivatives that you need to memorize. One was actually... Um, okay, let's just learn them real quick. If you have y equals e to the x, the derivative is e to the x. It is the easiest derivative. It's crazy. Um, it's the only thing other than zero that when you do the derivative of it, gives it itself. So y equals zero is, uh, the derivative is also zero because the derivative of a constant is zero. Um, but something e to the x is the only thing that'll get you back. A constant, any constant multiplier times e to the x will get you back the same thing. Um, the other special derivative we're going to learn is y equals the natural log of x. And that derivative, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So these are two new rules to be memorized. Um, we'll, they'll come up over the course of the class. Um, you know, and we can apply it with like things like constant multiplier rules. So if you have like 5e e to the x, the derivative is, you leave the constant multiplier alone, times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. Um, if you have something like 5 natural log of x, the derivative is um, the 5, let me just show you this real quickly, it's going to be 5 times 1 over x, but the way we always write that is 5 over x. So these are our basic, uh, these are two additional basic derivatives we want to know. Um, they're going to come up a lot. So I apologize, guys. I asked you to do this using the product rule, even though you didn't know how to do the derivative of the first one, which was going to be a problem. So now go ahead and try to do this using the product rule. And if you needed some help, um, remember that the product rule says we do the derivative of the first one, and the derivative of e to the x we just learned is e to the x, times the second one left alone, plus we need to leave the first one alone, times the derivative of the second one. And the derivative of cosine of x we should know is negative sine of x. This really needs to go in parentheses, so it doesn't just say e to the x minus sine of x. It needs to be e to the x times negative sine of the x. And this can be simplified a little bit just because a positive times a negative is a negative. And so um, we usually write this as e to the x cosine of x minus e to the x sine of x. And that's the derivative of e to the cosine of x, e, e to the x cosine of x. There's no way you would guess this without knowing the product rule. Um, so, so the product rule is pretty important. And there's no other way to do it besides using the product rule. Um, okay, let's have you guys try this one. What is the derivative of this? Hopefully we recognize that we need, this is a quotient um, and it can't be simplified. So the derivative, I hope we remember what the quotient rule is. The quotient rule says you do the derivative of the top one. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. The derivative of the top times the bottom left alone minus we leave the top one alone times the derivative of the bottom. And the derivative of the bottom is 2x. Uh, the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 4 is 0. Divided by um, the bottom squared. Okay, um, real quick uh, stylistic thing. We usually put polynomials and exponentials in front of trig functions. So we would usually rewrite this. We actually won't multiply it out. There's no real reason to multiply it out. But we would usually put x squared plus 4 
cosine of x minus 2x sine of x over x squared plus 4 squared. And we would leave it like this. Um, if you chose to multiply out that and get like x squared cosine of x plus 4 cosine of x, that's cool. Um, if you chose to, it's not a big deal, but this is usually how we leave our answer. Okay, let's do some uh, more things. Let's see how you guys can do this. It says y equals this guy. Determine dy dx. dy dx is another way of saying f prime of x or y prime. These are the three ways we show the derivative formula. So what is the derivative of this? Well, hopefully you were able to do it, but if not, let's look at it. Uh, the derivative is, I first see that there is a sum or difference. And when there's a sum or difference, I'm going to do each one of these separately. So I'm going to start with the first one. This is a product. So it's a sum or it's a difference of two products. So I'm going to do the two things in the difference separately. And um, this first one is going to be a product. So I need to use the product rule. It's the derivative of the first one, which is one times the second one left alone plus I leave the first one alone times the derivative of the second, and hopefully we know the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So this is the product rule from this first term. Now we have to do minus. We need to do the product rule here. Now the product rule is going to involve a, a sum. And so when I do minus, I need to put parentheses because I'm going to be subtracting this whole thing this becomes. So the derivative of 2x cosine of x is the derivative of 2x is so it's the derivative of the first one times the second left alone, plus we leave the first one alone times the derivative of cosine of x, which is negative sine of x. Um, and now we need to subtract. So this subtracting is distributing. And so we get um, uh, one times sine of x is just sine of x. We don't need to put the one plus x cosine of x um, minus two cosine of x. And then this is, when we multiply this out, this becomes a negative, and then minus a negative becomes a positive. So you kind of think of it as like negative times negative sine of x becomes positive sine of x if you want, I guess. And none of these are like terms. Uh, you know, they don't have the same things. This one has a sine of x and a sine of x, but this one has an extra x. This has a cosine of x and a cosine of x, but this one has an extra x. So there is the derivative using the product rule. Um, Again, be careful if there's a minus and a product rule, you need to put parentheses, and you often need to put parentheses around the product rule because it becomes a binomial a lot of the time. Uh, notice I put y prime here. I guess I should have said dy dx, but you wouldn't lose any points for that. They mean the same thing. Okay, go ahead and try this one. Find f prime of x if f of x equals four x cubed sine of x. So hopefully we see that this is a product and we get the derivative of the first one. The product rule says we do the derivative of the first one times the second one left alone, plus we leave the first one alone times the derivative of the second one. And uh, that's it, we're done. Super straightforward. How about this one? H prime of two. Um, by the way, questions like this are often like the first question on the AP exam. It's just like, hey, do this quick derivative. And if you know the rule, you get it right. And if you don't, you don't. Um, you don't need that many points. You, like this should be one that everybody gets right. And everybody will get it right by the time we get to the AP exam. No one in our class will miss this. So find h prime of two if h of x equals this. Guys, I want to um, reiterate that if it asks you for the derivative at a point, the way you always do it is you first find the general derivative formula. And if you're on the free response section of the AP exam, this is what you need to show. You find the derivative formula and then plug in that derivative formula that needs to come in two different steps. So h prime of x equals, um, hopefully we recognize that this is not a product rule. There is nothing multiplying. This is just some or difference. Don't get carried away and think that everything all the time is product rule. Um, this is a constant multiplier times a uh, power rule, so 15x squared, we multiply by the power, lower the power by one, minus multiply by the power, lower the power by one, and now we can find h prime of two, so we found the general formula, and now we're going to plug in, uh, two squared is four, four times 15 is 60, four times four is 16, and we get 44. 
Okay, um, let's look at two things. You may have noticed at this point that I've been kind of skirting over the fact that this is a product. We said that if there was a constant multiplier, you just leave the constant multiplier alone times the derivative of the other one. Um, but how does this square with our product rule? Because couldn't you think of this as f of x times g of x? And the answer is, of course you could. Yeah, this you could do the product rule on this, and it's going to come out right. But it's going to be slower. The constant multiplier rule, if there's a constant multiplier, do the constant multiplier rule. It's going to be faster. Um, let's look what happens with 5x squared if we do the product rule on it. So the constant multiplier rule just says, like, okay, leave the constant multiplier alone and, and do it. What would happen if we tried to treat this as f times x squared and do the product rule? Well, the product rule will say you do the derivative of the first one, which is, what's the derivative of 5? Well, that's 0 times the second one left alone, plus we leave the first one alone times the derivative of the second. And you'll notice the 0 part goes away and we get exactly what we got over here. So can you use the product rule? Sure you can, but it's just like extra steps. Um, in fact, let's do this for any constant multiplier. If you have, think of it as a times f of x, and you try to do, if this is f of x times g of x, the derivative of any constant will be 0 times uh, the derivative of the other one, plus we'll leave the constant alone times the derivative of the second. And you'll see that this zero one will always go away when this is a constant. And so the product rule simplifies to be the constant multiplier rule we already had if um, if the two things that are multiplying, if one of them is a constant. So I, I, let's just make sure we understand that the rules are all consistent. You can use either one you want, but there's a right one to use. If there's a constant multiplier, use the constant multiplier rule. With that said, let's see some quick practice. Uh, let's see how you guys do on this. This first one. Hopefully, you notice that this is a constant multiplier, so you don't need to use the product rule. If you did, it would come out right, but it's extra work. So the derivative is, we leave the constant multiplier alone, and we do cosine of x. This next one, how do we do it? Well, now this is not a constant multiplier. We really want to think of this as f times g. That's how we want to split it up into two things we know how to do. Um, like, if you tried to split it up into f times x cosine of x, well, is this one you know how to do the derivative of? You'd have to, like also do the product rule on this. So the right way to split it up is f of x times cosine of x into an easy way to, to do it that you know how to do it. So let's do the product rule. The product rule says we leave the first one alone. No, sorry, the product rule says we do the derivative of the first one. The derivative of 5x is 5 times the second one left alone plus we leave the first one alone times the derivative of the second one. The derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. And uh, we can simplify this to be 5 cosine of x minus 5x sine of x. When you have a positive times a negative, the negative should come and, and affect the sign. That's it. Um, how about this one? What's the right way to split this one up? Well, hopefully we see that we can split it up into 5 sine of x times cosine of x, because then we'll have two functions we know how to do the derivative of. So the derivative is, the product rule says we do the derivative of the first one. This is a constant multiplier. So 5 will stay there times the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And we leave cosine of x alone. Plus, we leave the first one alone. Uh, 5 sine of x times the derivative of the second one, which is negative sine of x. And this is this can be simplified cosine of x times cosine of x. We usually write as cosine squared of x minus... 5, this is usually written as sine squared of x. Um, and we could even factor out the 5 if we really wanted to, but it's not necessary. Cool. Okay, guys, how about this one? Um, what type of rule is this? Hopefully we recognize that this is, you could do it with a quotient rule, but you don't have to. And the reason you don't have to do this with a quotient rule is because it's easier to re rewrite it as a power. This is 5x to the negative 1. So did we need to use the quotient rule here? No, you could. It'll come out right, but it's going to be way longer. The derivative of 5x to the negative 1 is negative 5x to the negative 2, which is negative 5 over x squared. Now, let's just see. Could we have used the quotient rule on that? For sure we could. The quotient rule says you do the derivative of the top, 
times the bottom left alone, minus, we leave the top alone, times the derivative of the bottom, over the bottom squared. 0 times x is 0, uh, 0 minus 5 is negative 5, over x squared, which is the same thing we got. But guys, it's faster if you can use the power rule. Um, and it won't always be, by the way, this one came out relatively easy. Um, other times it comes out harder. Okay, um, this is also a quotient. The question is always, do we have to use the quotient rule? The answer is no, we sure don't. Um, when it's dividing by a constant, this is a special kind of thing we can rewrite. Dividing by five is the same as multiplying by one fifth. And so dividing by five is actually just a constant multiplier written in a different way. So a constant divider is the same as a constant multiplier because you can always rewrite as um, multiplying by the reciprocal. So what's the derivative of one fifth x? Well, the derivative of x is just one. So it's the constant multiplier times one, which is one fifth. Could we have used, done this using the quotient rule? Of course we could have, it'll work. The derivative of the top times the bottom left alone minus, uh, we leave the top alone times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. Five squared is 25. This simplifies to one times five is five minus zero divided by 25 and five twenty-fifths is one fifth, which is the same answer. But you don't have to use the quotient rule here. Last one, do we need to use the quotient rule here? And again, the answer is no. This dividing by five is a a constant multiplier of one-fifth. You can either bring it out as one-fifth or you can leave it as dividing by five if you recognize that a constant multiplier and a constant divider are the same thing because this is the same as multiplying by one-fifth. And so just like you can leave a constant multiplier in the front, you can leave a constant divider. So this is some indifference. So it's just 2x plus 1 over x and we leave the divider there. Um, we should probably simplify this. This is two fifths x and dividing by five. We, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't like a fraction divided by something. If this had been like e to the x or something, I would leave it like that. But one over x divided by five is ugly. Um, so dividing by five is the same as multiplying by one fifth. And so we get one over five x. That's the easiest way to leave it. Um, now, let's say we had done the quotient rule here. Oh, I hope we remember that the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. That's, I know that's a new one. Let's say we had done the quotient rule. The quotient rule would have said that, uh, or guys, we also could have written it as a constant multiplier like this and done 1 fifth times 2x plus 1 over x and multiplied it out, and it would have gotten us the same thing. Um, we also could have done the quotient rule. The derivative of the top, this is a sum or difference, so the whole derivative of the top is 2x plus natural log of x times the bottom left alone. I have to have parentheses here because it's a binomial. Minus, leave the top alone, times the derivative of the bottom, which will be zero, so that'll multiply this whole thing times zero, divided by the bottom squared. And so here, um, I'll get 10x plus five natural log of x over 25. And I can notice that there is a common factor of five. I can divide by five over five. Oh wait, I messed up, guys, this is so terrible. The derivative of x squared is two x. The derivative of natural log of x is one over x. It's so embarrassing. Okay, I can still divide by five over five and get two x plus um, one over x over five, which is the same thing I ended up getting before when I said, hey, we should rewrite it as this. So be on the lookout for ways to not use the quotient rule. All right, we're getting to the first one of many of these types of problems. The AP exam loves these. There's usually like, I don't know, five of them on the AP exam where they give you a table. And a table is just a little bit of information. And then it asks you questions with that just little bit of information they give you. So they give you some values of f of x at two different, so here are two different x values. So this is saying that when x is five, f of x is negative three. So this, this point is basically saying f of five equals negative three. Um, f prime of five, when x is five, f prime is two. When x is five, g is two thirds. When x is five, g prime is negative one. Um, so almost always with these, if they give you a rule, you just like ignore the table for a minute because it says 
And you'll see with all of these, we'll do this. It says, if h of x equals f of x times g of x, determine h prime of 5. I've told you before, and I'll tell you again. If it asks you for what is this, this is asking what is the slope when x equals 5. And always what you're going to do is find the general formula first. And plug in 5. And so what we're always going to do is find h prime of x and then plug in 5. So how do we find h prime of x here? Well, we don't need the table at all. It says h of x equals f of x g of x. So how do we find h prime? Well, we do the product rule because this is a product. h prime of x is the derivative of the this product is, we do the derivative of the first one times the second one left alone, plus we leave the first one alone times the derivative of the second one. And this is actually literally the definition of the product rule. And now you can do h prime of five. And by the way, on the AP exam, both of these need to be written out. You can't like skip to this step. You, you will not get the points. You have to write h prime of x equals, and then you have to plug in the five. So it's gonna be f prime of five, g of five, plus f of five, g prime of five. And now we can use the table. So h prime of 5, which is what we're looking for, is going to be f prime of 5, and we'll use the table. Um, we're looking at f prime when x is 5. So when x is 5, f prime is 2. Times g of 5 means when x is 5, what is g of x? This is 2 thirds. f of 5 means when x is 5, what is f? That's negative 3. Times g prime of 5 is negative one. And we can simplify this. Um, two times two thirds, this is two over one times two. So four thirds. A negative times a negative is positive. And we need to know how to combine these fractions. Um, change three to three over one. Multiply by three over three to get a common denominator. So we get four thirds plus nine thirds, which is 13 thirds. Okay. All right, guys. Try this on your own. First, if it asks for p of 2, is it asking for a derivative? No. p of 2 just means you put in 2 for this. So 3 times 2 is 6 times g of 2 is, um, we have to use the table, g of, so when x is 2, g is 4, and that's 24. This is a pre-calculus problem, not a, not a calculus problem. Um, if they had asked for p prime of 2, then we would be doing the product rule. How about this next one? If p of x equals g of x over f of x, determine p prime of 2. Go ahead and try it on your own. And hopefully you got that you need to find the general derivative formula first. So p prime of x is, it's the derivative of the top times the bottom left alone. This is the quotient rule. This is a quotient. Minus, we leave the top alone times the derivative of the bottom all divided by the bottom squared. We usually write it as f squared of x or f of x in parentheses squared. Um, so let's see. Um, now we can do p prime of 2. And we can just plug directly into the table. Um, g prime of 2. g prime of 2 is negative 2 um, times f of x, f of 2, we're going to plug in 2 now for f of 2, f of 2 is 1 half, minus g of 2 is 4, times f prime of 2 is 3, over um, f of 2 is 3, oh, no, sorry, f of 2 is 1 half squared. Let's simplify this. Negative 2 times uh, 1 half, multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2 cancel out, and we get negative 1 minus 12. A half times a half is 1 fourth. Um, and so we get negative 13. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, and so we get 52, negative 52. Tricky one. Okay, p of x equals 2x over f of x. Determine p prime of 5. Go ahead and do that. Well, the p prime of x, the formula, is how, what you should find first. p prime of x, the derivative of the top, is 2 times the bottom left alone, minus, we leave the top alone, times the derivative of the bottom, which is just f prime of x, over 
the bottom squared. This is another way to write f of x squared. And so p prime of 5 is equal to 2 times, what is f of 5? f of 5 is negative 3. Just looking it up in the table. Minus, uh, when we plug in 5 for x, 2 times x is 10. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10. And f prime of 5 is 2 divided by f of 5 squared. So 2 squared. Oh, man, this is so ugly. So negative 6 minus 20 is negative 26 divided by 4, which can be simplified to negative 13 halves. All right. Determine the graph of g of x. Determine the equation of the, the line tangent to the graph of g of x at x equals 2. Um, so think about the question. What is it asking you to do? It wants the equation of the tangent line. What is the equation of a tangent line? That's y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1, where what is m? That's going to be g prime here. Um, and x1, y1 is a point. So let's see. We've got x equals 2, so that's our x1. So 2 comma, the way we find y1 is we need to do g of 2. What is g of 2? Well, for that, we need the table. The table says that when x is 2, g is 4. So the point is 2 comma 4. What about the slope? The slope, when x is 2, so when x is 2, g prime of 2 is negative 2. That's what it says in the table. So g prime is negative 2. And so the equation of the tangent line is negative 2, um, x minus 2 plus 4. All right, guys. Hopefully you're feeling pretty good about these product and quotient rules. You really want to have them memorized. This is a really good opportunity to uh, take some flashcards. I, I, I would really use flashcards. And let me just tell you some of the things you should have memorized already. Um, you should know the product rule. Uh, and, and guys, you don't need to like spend time memorizing stuff you know if you feel like you know it. So the product rule is if you have x to the n, the derivative is n times x to the n minus 1. This is worth putting on a flashcard. Like on the front side, put f, and on the back side, putting f prime. You should know sine of x. Put it on the front side. And on the back side of the flashcard, put sine of, cos cosine of x. Um, let's see. Cosine of x, the derivative is negative sine of x. Uh, e to the x is a new one from today. And the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Natural log of x, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Um, it's probably worth putting on the, the product rule. If you have f of x, g of x, the derivative is, this is the product rule, put it on a flashcard, memorize it, test yourself, do you know how to do it? Um, g prime of x. Uh, and then what else do we have? We've got uh, quotient rule. Uh, sorry, f of x over g of x. And that derivative is going to be, you do the derivative of the top times the bottom left alone minus, leave the top alone, times the derivative of the bottom, over the bottom squared. Um, so, so guys, I would, I would spend a few minutes making some flashcards and just flip them over until you're getting them right every time. A little bit of time now will save you a ton of time later. Hopefully you're feeling pretty good about this. You'll get some practice tonight.